Yeah. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> what's up, Darren? How are you guys? How are you guys? Hey, hey. doing so great. Good. Yep. Oh, it's I'll so good to see you. See <laughs> yeah. So, Darren, last time we had you on the podcast, we talked about your history and your incredible collection. And today we have a lot of cool updates. A lot of cool updates. We're talking about, talk about your website and the documentary, some big sales that are happening on Heritage right now. Very, Heritage. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a really fun conversation. But before we dive into that, uh, we actually had a giveaway recently, and we're in the process of finding a winner for this uncirculated graded McFarland action McFarland toys action figure of Batman. So congratulations to the winner. We're going to be announcing that very soon. Very mm. soon. So very excited for that. So Darren, man, we uh we have a new website. Yes. Yes. This is cool. a long time in the making. Yeah. Super nice website. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Eric who is the artist, right, of the collection and the label and so on, has been the lead on this, as far as graphically. Um, obviously, content-wise, we've all contributed and, you know, verbiage and things like that, but he's really owned this. And, um, you know, just it, with every other thing he's done for us, just an amazing, amazing job. So Eric Hodson and the Dreaded Dinosaur, um, just, and again, incredible, incredible resource and become a great friend. That's awesome. That's awesome. And the website, so what is the sole purpose of the, of the website? Well, um, you know, we constantly get um, people asking, do you have X? Do you have Y? Do you, you know, and um, from the beginning, you know, we've we've always been weighing the different ways that we could get this collection out to the masses, right? And and the angle has always been to not have it be a dealer-driven thing where the dealers, you know, get to vulture and get top choice and scrape the collection clean and pick its bones. You know, we were very adamant about if we were working with dealers for that to be a consignment situation, where they were just bridging our presence. You know, they were literally going to the shows and all over the country. And, you know, we've met a lot of great dealers. Um, um, you know, we were very entrenched with Harley Yee. Um, Rob from, um, you know, uh, Red Hood has been an amazing supporter. Um, several other little uh, dealers like, you know, Josh and Jamie that go to more of the local cons. So we try to spread that out. But the website gives a further reach, of course, right? It gives a worldwide reach, literally, mm -hmm. uh, to what we have available for purchase. And then we also use from the website plugins that push to eBay. So you get all of that eBay exposure for any of these items for people that don't either know to go direct to us or so on. So then when we make an eBay sale, we throw a little card in that thanks them, of course, and then says, hey, by the way, next time for the best deal, visit our site direct. Because, you know, we do, we do markup for eBay just to cover the fees. It's just basically a straight markup for the fees. So yeah, it's a way to move books, get them in the hands of the end collector, because that's really one of the big things at Fantastic is we want the end collectors to benefit, um, not just to have this be some you know dealer fest that again comes in and picks us clean and um, gives everyone a chance to to get good books at good prices direct. That's, that's awesome. so cool. And these comics are from your personal collection. Most of the, uh, actually, pretty much everything I could say uh, are from are from the Fantastic collection, the original collection. You know, uh, one of the things that people are seeing over time is that, you know, I'm buying so much too. And the reason is like the comic you have right on the screen right now, you know, we probably had a hundred of them, mm. right? I mean, um, that was one of the ones we, we've not in all nine eights necessarily, but, you know, we definitely had a, a huge amount of quantity of those. Well, there's no need to have a hundred of those, at least the way I would like to collect, right? And yeah. so by by getting those out to people that of course would benefit from them, uh, we have the ability to then recycle that money into books that we want to uh, have, you know, for the PC, if you will. And so that's what I've been doing. I mean, I've been buying um, a lot of action comics that uh, for the early Supermans that we did not have. You know, we had every Superman as part of the original collection, but we certainly didn't have every action. So I've been right. plugging a lot of those holes or Planet Comics or Smash Comics. These are things that I really appreciate and like. And mm -hmm. so it's given that opportunity to do it. So it's basically when you buy something from the website, you're really, um, you know, getting the opportunity to get one of our books uh, in, the, in, in one of the conditions. But you're also helping us recycle that um, into maybe, um, you know, again, building the building the collection even further. That's so awesome. Awesome. Are, is your goal to, to finish out some of those runs just yes. in terms of like your personal collecting goals? Yeah, that's yes. awesome. That's that's an ambitious goal. Or do you have a, a grade goal in mind or just just trying to finish the sets in general? <sighs> You know, I, I, my Superman's very important to me, right? So getting some of those early actions, you know, I've got an action three now, 
you know, I want to get an action two. And then there's this action one I've heard about. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, apparently that's a big comic book in, in the world. I've heard. Um, <laughs> so the point is that, yeah, I mean, it's exciting to fill in some of those runs and, and especially, you know, the, uh, the golden age. Um, uh, but also just the robot covers. And then we've started some other little offshoots. Like it started as a joke, but you know, you probably see on the Instagram, I comment about it all the time is this whole dudes throwing dudes concept. And it's, it's been the funniest thing. Like, so like covers that include like something like an Avengers, you know, um, Avengers 55, you know, with mayhem or, you know, some of these other covers that just, uh, are, are like these wild fight scenes. We're starting to collect those. We're, we're honing in on that kind of thing. And and uh, creating almost like a little, um, I don't know, like a little um, way to sub collect within the within the within the collection. So as far as the runs, it's not just a condition. It's not even necessarily owning every single one of let's say actions, but um, important Superman, uh, robot covers, sci-fi, Golden Age um, um, uh, is what I'm concentrating mostly on. So we're very very strong already in bronze and silver. So again, and mostly it's been plugging the holes in the in the golden age. But that's so nice. cool. And I know it's we exciting. dove yeah. deeper. Yeah, super excited. I know we dove a little deeper in the last podcast. We talked about how you decided instead of going through a pedigree, you decided just to create your own label and you collaborated with CGC to create your own fantastic label. So every comic that has a fantastic label is from your personal collection. Is that correct? It is. Um, and and to clarify there, and that's that's been a lot of questioning, right? And it's funny because you know, now that since the website is connected to eBay and there's been this influx of a lot of the label getting on eBay, you're starting to hit a lot of people that you know hadn't seen it before or hadn't heard about the story or hadn't heard about the movie or whatever. So you're getting these mixed reviews, and sometimes listen, sometimes they're very negative. Some people people are like, Oh my god, this is the ugliest label I've ever seen. This is this, and it's like, well. Again, remember everyone that CGC approached us for the opportunity. We didn't mm -hmm. approach them. Okay. And, you know, CGC um, is in no way involved in the film in the sense of financially. So they didn't do it as some like puff piece. You know, they knew we were not a pedigree. And the reason we're not a pedigree is because my father did not assemble the collection all firsthand. And that's one of the main rules of being a pedigree, which, by the way, they're working on because CGC realized that that's kind of unborrowed time. You know, the, the, how how can a, a golden age collector possibly be firsthand at this point almost? You know, these people are mm -hmm. passing away. I mean, you know, how do you, how do you, if you collected comics in 1939, you're really old. <laughs> and so, you know, you <laughs> might not be around. And yeah. if you are around, you're very fortunate. And um, if, if, if um, uh, it's inherited, that also can count. Like meaning yeah. if my collection, uh, uh, you know, the fantastic collection had been passed to me and acquired firsthand by my father, that would count. Um, you know, the Promise Collection had that story where the original owner, of course, passed away in the war, right? And that was still a pedigree. So that can't count, but not when it was assembled from different sources. So we are Provenance. Um, we're the first time CGC approached anyone for a custom label. Incredible, humbling opportunity. I did the best I could with it. Um, there's a lot of power and meaning. As people know, they can visit sellingsuperman.com and there's a, um, there's, you know, the, the movie trailer. But down below, what people a lot of times don't realize is there's another film or, or, or it's really a 10 minute little video explaining the meaning of the custom yeah. you know, so all i ask of people is when they comment on the label just be educated on what it means first have any comment you want cosmetically i can't control that you know again some people like pink some people like blue some people like velvet <laughs> yeah. I mean, who cares i mean that's that's a personal preference everyone has their own right to those opinions but it's, you know, but as, as far as like what was included on it, like, you know, people, um, you know, wonder why selling soup man is on that. Is that an advertisement? Is that how, you know, CGC advertised it? And I really didn't mean it to be that way at all. I, I meant to have it be an association. You know, there's two yeah. ways that I felt people would know about us, right? Is A, maybe someone heard of Fantast and they heard about this Fantast collection. And remember that name itself is a homage to my father. That's a handle he used online. So that's, that's kept within the family too. And then the second way is just from the film, right? And I don't care what you think of the film. Like you could love it, you could hate it, whatever. It's still this is the collection featured in that film. So the front of the of the label was to do just that, was to associate, hey, you've either heard of us, this fantastic name, or you've heard about it from this movie. And the adjective you use to describe the movie is your choice. But we are from that film. So if it's the worst thing you've ever seen, right? Well, that, we're, the, we're that collection. And if it's a cool, heartwarming film that you've seen and you want to own part of it, that's how to find it. 
so that's that's really been the the the, the journey with the label. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, the that's important so part is is that it provides the provenance for the collection, and yeah, you know, it tells the story. So I think as, yeah. as long as it's accomplishing that, and that's that's all you need. Um, but uh, I guess speaking of the documentary, curious if you could give us a, a bit of an update on what's going on with it since we last chatted. You know what? It's been a wild ride. It's uh, inches away. Uh, I don't have anything to do with post production, right? So uh, Adam Schomer, who I think you guys talked to before, Adam, a great course. interview. Big shout out to Adam. Yeah, yeah, Adam. Adam. I have to tell you, um, Adam has been an absolutely incredible human being and friend through this process. I've been a very challenging person to work for, and I, or work with, not for, with. And I will fully admit that I have been um, very emotional about this project, um, legitimately. Um, I've been very hard on Adam at times because of like, hey, I can't have that in there, or I'm unsure about this. I mean, yeah, I uh, I, I pulled back several times on him, so. I have to just really make sure that it's known that I have a massive amount of respect for the patience he's had through this process and how accommodating he's been to the sensitivity of this for my family. Um, I, I can get very emotional talking about that. So that's first mm -hmm. and foremost. Um, but the second piece is that it's become a four part little mini series. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, cool. And, so cool. and, and, and I, I don't know why other than it's just too long to be <laughs> a single movie. Um, so the decisions that the professionals make, which certainly doesn't include me, um, and on the back end with our sales agent, um, that he's working with and then himself decided that it would be too cramped to be in like a 90 minute feature, you know, documentary. So they split it up into four parts. So each part is between like 35 and 40 minutes from what I understand. Cool. And we're at the point now where he literally is sending me, you know, 10 second, 30 second little, um, snapshots of like final touches that we're getting down to. Because the goal is to make it into the Hot Docs Film Festival, which is in Toronto at the end of April. And cool. what I'm told, that is the premier um, festival for a documentary to be in, uh, in literally North America. Um, so, again, I'm just a spectator in this whole wild rodeo. <laughs> and the thing is that uh, humbled to just have such amazing people working on it, you know. And, I, again, I'm just constantly blown away at the quality of this stuff. Um, you know, I mean, it just all looks so professional all the time and yeah. just amazing because you see what they're shooting with and, you know, you, 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 you imagine like in a movie set, them having all these cameras and special stuff. And, you know, these guys are doing it with, um, you know, obviously pro level gear, but it's just amazing what they, the product they can, you know, put out. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully in a couple, in a couple months, it'll be, um, uh, announced like, you know, maybe that we have a relationship with something to be streamed. You know, because well, apparently that's yeah. where it happens at these festivals, yeah. like the Netflixes yeah. and the HBOs yep. and everybody. So, look, man, I mean, it's exciting and nerve-wracking. Um, yeah. I'm just thankful that we're done shooting. <laughs> and, you it's know, official. That, uh, You're officially done yeah. shooting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I have to say, I mean, as nerve-wracking as the film is and is ex uh, exploiting uh, in the sense of our the personal lives in some cases, it's yeah. it's accurate. Um. And Adam did a really good job of 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 uh, marrying the seriousness with also was also the the light part of the journey of us forging friendships, meeting great people, um, um, coming together as is when I say we all the time as the sons of the collection. You know that's all the fa fantastic family. It's Adam Keller and and you know Mark Rodriguez who helps us with the cards and um, you know Janine who checks stuff in constantly. Um, you know just the team Brian of course Josh Jamie Eric. I mean. It's really become an organization. It's it's really yeah. wild. So. Yeah, that's incredible. I'm really I'm really excited that you decided that you just decided to just split this into four parts and and fit the streaming format because I was actually going to ask about that and I, I would love to see this on the streaming platform. Yeah, I think it. Well, oh no, it, it it's targeted to be on. Yeah, one of a you know like a Netflix or a, a, a CW or a, a Max it. or whatever. So we'll see what they have to say about it. But the point is that's that's no, that's how it's being structured to be represented. Uh, of course, it'll be on video on demand. And, you know, there's a lot of people. It's very interesting. And you guys will appreciate this. Um, there's a lot of people asking for the physical format. They want the cool. DVD. Cool. Yeah, they cool. want the cool. DVD. You know, yeah, I cool if you guys did like a collector's edition yeah. or something like that. Yeah, That's like DVD, cool, Blu-ray, or maybe yeah, even like a VHS or something like that. Yeah, be because really cool. I told Adam, yeah. I'm like, you know, maybe with something like that, we can do some of the behind the scenes of the director stuff. I mean, you can imagine yeah. how much footage there is. 
And you can yeah. imagine how much unused footage there is mm -hmm. that doesn't yeah. make it in the movie. You know, and ah, oh, some of it's so cool. I mean, and you know, there's entire storylines, you know, that we don't even touch on. You know what I mean? Uh, there's entire interviews, of course, that we don't, uh, that, that he decided not to use because they were good and they were relevant, but they, you can't use everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if we could do like a, a behind the scenes, that'd be fun as hell to just sit around and be like, oh, I remember when we shot that. And almost like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, but yeah, really it's, cool. I found that fascinating. I thought you guys get a kick out of that. For <laughs> yeah. sure. like, you know, That's because awesome. we are buying, uh, you know, buying old VHSs and stuff. And people are literally yeah. asking for the physical media. Yeah. They want a DVD or a Blu-ray. I love that. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, learning about your story, Darren, over the past year, it's, man, I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for telling your story. It's it's really brave of you to come out and talk about it publicly yeah. and, and put it into a, a documentary like this, a documentary series. It's not an easy thing to do. And I just want to say thank you very much for doing that. Thank you for saying that, because I can tell you, I, I, again, you could maybe see the emotion on the face. It, it's, it's been a very hard road. I never would have imagined uh, that making something like this would have been as, um, you know, because you got to realize, I mean, there's, there was, there is some deep stuff that I had unresolved with my childhood and my father and the way we were raised and, you know, uh, relationships with my brother and how that was, was, um, you know, how he was affected. And mm. when you jive right into this process, you just don't have a lot of time to process through that. Like a, a normal person would, you know, cameras off, not having to tell certain stories, not having to recreate certain memories or, or things like that. You know, this was not like a textbook way to grieve. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's 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 sad because the story, you know, the story, um, you know, I don't want to say vilifies my father. I hope not. But there are times where it does. It comes across like, okay, this guy, you know, he's very hard on his family and made it hard for them. But come on, he was my dad. I mean, I loved him very yeah. much. I miss him every day. I mean, in, in different ways, even though he was very, you know, tough in so many ways and did some damage. You know, I would never want it to come out as like some hate piece of like, oh, you hated your dad, but now you like him because there's a cool collection. That has nothing to do with anything. And, you know, that's really important that I hope people take away is that this is not like, a, you know, we were estranged, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, you get the call, like, you know, in the movies, like you get the call from the lawyer and it's like, it's time <laughs> to read the will. And yeah. <laughs> first of all, there was no will. I mean, I was with that man until the day he died. I was on that. I was with that man the day he died. You know what I mean? There was no estrangement. There was no like mm -hmm. um, away from him. So it was just an emotional roller coaster. I mean, when he was in hospice for the last, you know, week of his life, I mean, I was there every day. No one else was there. You know, my brother wouldn't go. My mom was not uh, willing to go. And, um, I, you know, before that, I took care of him during COVID. So, I mean, it, it was kind of a harsh, abrupt ending that wasn't expected. His passing was very sudden. Um yeah. So none of this was preferred. And then all of a sudden, it's like a few months later, you're being interviewed about it. Yeah. You know, it wasn't anyone's intent. It's not like I want to make it sound like Adam was you know, pressuring me or something like that. It's just how it flew. It, it, it evolved. And then all of a sudden, you know, you take a breath every once in a while, like, oh, this is really hard. And, you know, I haven't yeah. gone through the right channels of healing for this. So you'll see that in the film. You'll see the conflict. It's, 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 it's authentic. But it's also you, intimidating. Yeah. Are you, are you still going through the collection? Have you, oh, have you finished yes. going through? <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. I mean, are you, are you even remotely close? <laughs> um, you know, with, with something like this, you go in waves, right? So yeah. when people are like, have you seen everything? Well, yeah, but not really. And so when I say why that is like, we've identified every Hulk 181. We've identified every Iron Man one. All right. So anything big and huge and obvious, you know, and I'm just naming all stuff, right? What we haven't named is some, what we haven't found all of, and we find them all the time. Like I was just sending some stuff down to CGC today, and we have many, many titles that either are the best copy in the census, probably will be the best copy in the census, yeah. or the only copy in the census. <laughs> so we're, we're in that wave of things now where, you know, okay, it's like, all right, are all the AF-15s identified? Great. All the Superman ones identified. Great. All right. Now you go through. All right, wait a minute. Have we looked for every double cover? Have we looked for every like Sodi book? Have we looked for every um, air variant? You know right. what I mean? You go through layers of of doing that, and then like, okay, 
we have this entire pile that we're not going to grade unless they're nine eights. So this entire whole thing will be nine eight pre-screens. So when we talk about looking through everything, um, the first pass, uh, second pass, kind of, now it's really the deep third pass of like, okay, what's really here and how are we going to sell this? Are we going to even grade this or are we going to sell it raw? Are we going to keep yeah. that book? You know, so that's kind of the answer to that. Nice. Is there a lot of stuff that you are keeping raw and not, not grading just because you, you don't see the value in it or? You know, I, I know I, again, I, I, I can get, you know, hated on for this, but I, I love graded. I mean, when it, I guess I should say when it's in our own collection, I'm less strict about it. But when I buy, you know, I, I it's funny because Brian, you know, again, best friend, right hand man in this whole thing, he's a raw dog all the way. You know, he is a pure raw. I mean, there's a scene in the film uh, where I, I had given him a Silver Surfer four and like an eight five beautiful book. You know, again, wow. he, he needed it. Oh, I give away. I mean, listen. If you work for this collection, you get great stuff. Okay, we take that's care cool. of our guys. They all get great stuff. Um, but the point is that, uh, and and of course, it's that makes me so happy to do it. But the point is, gain eight five, and you know, a little bit of a spoiler, he cracks it right on film. <laughs> cracks it right over. No. Oh yeah, no, that's I five. love it because that's and what he, he told me he was going to do it before. I'm like, it's your book, you do what you want. Yeah, that's cool. But I always <laughs> joke with him. I'm like, you know what, man? When I buy a book, because I bought many Raws that ended up, we sent them into grading, especially Golden Age and stuff like that. Oh, they're restored. Oh, we didn't yeah. know they had tape on this. Oh, shoot. That's right. our place staple. Oh, crap. So I really like to know what I'm getting when I'm buying. And I always say this to him, and it's kind of a funny thing. When you buy a graded book, you get the raw for free. Kind of interesting, wow. right? Yeah. You can always yeah, go raw. Yeah. You can always go raw. You open the book. Open the yeah. book. Open the case. Be careful. You buy graded, <laughs> yeah. get the raw for free. So you're buying True. something, you know what at least it is. You know that every page is there. You know the value stamp's there. You know that it's not restored. You know it's not color touched. It's not married. Whatever. Then if you want to have it raw, you're free to do so. But it's hard to go the other way, right? Totally. Because if you do have a book that ends up, oh, shoot, I didn't know about that tape or that staple, uh, then you get burned. So yeah. uh, I like to grade um, just to know that it's complete and authentic. Um and uh, yeah, that that's my thing. Now, again, I, I read, but I read more modern stuff. I read, you know, um, more of the modern Superman lines and so on like that. And so, again, you're obviously not worried about grading for that stuff. Yeah. Definitely. Do you uh, do, do you ever read read comics digitally? You know, I knew we were going to go here, and this yeah. is something, <laughs> I'm, you know, I didn't listen, expect you so I'm, soon. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I'm excited to learn more about this. Uh, I know you guys are very plugged into this, and I have to say, for as heavy as I am into crypto. And as heavy eye as I am into crypto projects and have been, uh, I have not turned the corner on digital uh, digital collectibles. And it's not because I don't agree or, or, or whatever, but yeah, I need a little, I need a, I need the crutch to get there of why I'd want it digitally uh, yeah. instead of physically. Um, reading them, I guess, I don't know. I, I do like holding it. Um, yeah. Oh no, I'm I'm very interested in your opinion on this yeah. subject, to be honest with you, because I know you guys are pretty heavy in this. So, yeah. well, transitioning to <laughs> this new announcement, actually, so VB at South by Southwest announced in Marvel that they're they launched a new platform, a new app. Uh, it's a reader's oh. app, but also every new comic that's now going to be released from Marvel is going to be released in digital format. Yeah, every physical oh, yeah. release also is going to have a, a digital release at the same time. But I thought well, on, on the same day that. that it hits the stores. But they I they did Marvel already have that. Didn't they, they Marvel did. already have that? So Marvel has Marvel Unlimited, and you can yeah. read mm -hmm. the comics, but you don't have ownership of that comic. Right. But yeah, now but you no have scarcity. an opportunity. Yeah. But now you have an opportunity to own the comic in digital format the same day as the physical release, which is incredible. Incredible. So are they the limiting way, that? Limited digital? They are. Okay. Yeah, 999 total, and they do. So here's an wow. example. So well, we the, I think there's there's two. There's there's an open edition, and then there's also uh, like a limited cover as well. So there's there's two options right. you can go for. Yeah. So you can read it on the app and buy it for four dollars, very similar to what's on Marvel Unlimited, or you can buy a limited edition comic like this, and it comes in different variants that are all tied to the VV app. So you can buy it on this website. You sign with your account, and it's all immediately transferred to the VV account where you can own it and even sell it. If you'd like, yeah. and this sure. is all, this is on, this is on VB. Okay. Got it. And, um, yeah. look, man, there's something really here. I mean, again, I just have not turned the corner. You know, I own NFTs, but the NFTs that I own are, are mostly uh, utility and producing NFTs, right? Mm -hmm. They, they have some sort of utility. Now that you could argue they're still a utility depending what it is. 
Um, mm -hmm. What I'm very involved with is um, Chicken on Avalanche. You know, that is a, those guys are incredible backers of their project. Um, you know, a friend of mine, um, through one of my investment companies got me involved in that and we have a great time with it, but it's also, it, it it's really caught on and it, and they've done a great job of backing it. So I have not gotten into just digital, um, ownership of, um, art or, 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 or even comics, you know, uh, yeah. the last time I looked, it was interesting to me that they were selling them based on artificial condition. I thought that was hysterical. You know, like you're literally buying a grade three digital comic that's artificially like looked to be worn. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, right. That's on Candy Digital. That's yeah, yeah right. Candy Digital. Yeah, Candy Digital. Yeah. So it's easy yeah. Yeah. yeah, which I'm also yeah, it's kind of it's a similar idea, except that's more entirely the DC brand. Uh I they see. have an NFT project called Bat Cows, and which has a ton of utility. And we can I feel like we could dive into that in another episode. Yeah. <laughs> well, saying. again, uh, you yeah. guys are up on that, and I'm fascinated. <laughs> but, you know, the true answer is I have not. I have not. And listen, I have the ETH. I have the. I mean, I've got the. I can definitely <laughs> get into this. Um, but yeah. I haven't, and uh, and that's yeah. the truth. But again, I'm, I'm yeah. fascinated by it. I, I would love to see yeah. this become more popular. Um, I like the price point. You know, it's a leveler. Yeah. Anyone can get into that. That's wonderful. It's not discriminatory. Um, yeah. But I will say some, some of the VV comics though are, are very val valuable. Like some of like the uh, like the very scarce editions, like the secret rares, those go for thousands. Like what is like the the AF fifteen secret rare right now? That's probably once one sold recently for around ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand wow. last week. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They sold version. as high as fifteen plus, bit around fifteen thousand. I think that's like a one of one that one kind of thing. Oh, there's no? about two to about two hundred ish editions. Mm -hmm. If oh, anyone wow. out there knows the exact number, please uh, yeah. tell me the I comment. Think I think it's about. I think it's about that though. Yeah, <laughs> about two hundred. Yeah, but the comment, even the very the, the comment goes for about three fifty four hundred dollars, and those sell consistently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's awesome. But, I mean, again, we I, I had to talk with um uh, a couple of the, the guys at, at dinner the um a couple of weeks ago. Now it was kind of in the heart of the um you know the whole CBC scandal with the swapping of the books and the, right. we were talking about yeah, right. you know how could how could digital uh, fingerprinting or NFTs, you know, maybe aid in the authentication process and making sure yeah. that that kind of stuff doesn't happen. If you could tie it, you know, and marry those totally. two worlds, the physical and the digital um, a verification to make sure, nope, nope, that is that book. You know yeah. what I mean? There, listen, yeah. there's, some, there's some definite tech to develop on that. And uh, yeah. I seem to think that with AI and some of the, um, um, just the accuracy of some of the imaging, that they're going to be able to literally blueprint books very soon where you yeah. know that that exact raw you know just because the little nuances like that staple is just a quarter you know quarter millimeter different than the other and it's going to detect those variances so it you yeah. literally will get down to like iding books so yeah hopefully yeah, yeah you'll have that, have that lined up it's like a cgc identifying number or whatever and then then you know for certain yeah why not? And blockchain is a perfect application for that, right? It's yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, you have the immutable record, you know, stored in the chain, and then you could, you could have, you could even have an, an NFC chip, you know, embedded in the actual slab that that links to an NFT that that is that COA basically. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot, a lot of stuff they could be doing, but yeah, I'm sure, especially after that that whole scandal, they're they're really working to you know reorganize their whole process and make sure that it's yeah. it's airtight going future. Yeah. Well, and again, you know, the problem is that, and, and, and again, you know, um, my primary company, as we've probably talked about before, is a tech company, and we're on the infrastructure side. But it's it's like anything. When you're at the top of the hill like that, you're the target, right? So it, 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 these comments were, you know, oh, CGC should be doing this and that. CGC should be doing as much as they possibly can to mitigate risk, but they're always going to be attacked, period. Always. Yeah. They're going to be attacked. Because again, there's there's too much of a uh, an ability to, um, you know, artificially increase your value if you can, you know, slide by the system. And um, again, when you are the mothership, you're going to get attacked. So yeah. again, I, I find it funny when people are like so appalled that it's like, what do you think? I mean, again, I mean, that's why these ransomware people that are out there hacking everything in the world are going after big, big hits. You know what I mean? Um, of course. Yeah. So, get that, so no different. Yeah. yeah. Are you uh, are you familiar with uh, courtyard.io on Polygon? That project? I'm not. No. So I, th I think as of now, it's only Pokemon cards. But they have a really cool system that they've built where uh, if you have a slabbed Pokemon card, you can send it into them and they have like Brinks vaults and everything like that for securing all the items. Um, they do some imaging and they basically create an NFT of your actual physical card. And then that digital card can then be traded, you know, a hundred times without the physical actually ever moving hands 
And the person who originally mints it to the chain actually gets a residual, I think like 2% or 1% or something of every sale that happens going forward if you were the one who actually minted it originally to, to put it on Courtyard. Uh, and I assume they're, they're going to expand that to you know other types of collectibles too. So yeah, very, it's very cool innovations use, happening. It's, it's the perfect, yeah. like you said earlier, use of blockchain, the immutable record. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's, it's very affordable, you know, you're not talking about massive databases that are sensory located and all the, you know, the distributed properties of the blockchain, uh, you know, and all those advantages. So listen, I'm, I'm in favor of the, the, the tech. I just hope it catches on. We have nothing yeah. but, you know, positive bullish news with, you know, obviously Bitcoin leading the charge and having yeah. and ETFs and everything in the world. So I, I see nothing but upside. Definitely. Yeah. You know, it, one of the big conversations right now, especially as the, when the announcement happened a few days ago, the fear of physical comic books being replaced by digital comic books. And, you know, I, I really personally don't see that happening anytime soon. I think there are so many purists out or, there. Or the demand, yeah, forever, yeah the demand yeah. is so high for physical comic books. And what's really special too, and especially having the chance to get to know this community over the past two years, you know, a lot of collectors never collected on this uh, ever in their lives before they started collecting on Vivi. And now, you know, they're buying these digital comic books, but they're excited about collecting and they're buying the physical counterparts. Wow. They're excited about it. But the biggest thing too, is there a lot of people world. We talked to a lot of people worldwide that are collected on Vivi and they don't have an opportunity to get modern comics. It's not easy for them. So having a chance to buy one in a digital format, it just creates accessibility. Wow. And, yeah, and that's in the, the that's foreign the market you're saying, right? In, in the foreign, foreign markets, yeah, because yeah. I'm always thinking about the foreign markets and how they're oh. impacted. And selling these comics, especially as you know, I'm sure, you know, selling sending comics internationally is not an easy thing. I mean, you try to sell send a comic to the Philippines or even South Africa, it's really difficult to do that. Yeah. But these digital comic books, you know, they I send them to my friend, you know, when Vivi had transfers up, they were able to transfer comic books to friends and let them enjoy it. And they have ownership of those comic books. You know, it's really exciting. So it just creates more accessibility and more people who are excited about collecting. Yeah. That's yeah. I think, I think a good way to look at it. It's like, it's uh, it's just like a supplemental, like a collecting experience on top of, you know, what people are already doing in the physical space. Um, and especially for like a lot of these really, really scarce comics that there might only be 50 copy, 50 or even less copies, you know, on the census, like in general, you know, that those are all that exist in the world. You know, there's only so many, so few people that can own those. So it's cool that people can still have an opportunity on the digital side to own that, you know, after that, because they are so scarce on the physical. Right. Totally. Listen, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, back to the, the, the way things shake out, everyone is grading so much, like, you know, go count up the amount of, like you used AF15 as an example, or go count up the amount of raws that exist in the world versus graded now. Yeah, because yeah, everyone that true. has one, yeah. I mean, the first thing they want to do is they want to grade it, right? I mean, because yeah, they right. want to know what they have, they want to know. So I think that you're going to find that raws and maybe digitals are going to creep up as desirable, you know, more yeah. than they are now, because again, the grading market has become saturated. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it is true. And and you have a lot of people that'll ask me, they're like, Well, you're not gonna grade everything, are you? And again, I am gonna grade what makes sense. You know, I'm making that as a financial decision of of value. And again, I never feel bad for grading it because I know that it can always go raw again. Again, That's if there right. was something that made it so it could never go raw again, that would be totally different. It's the mm -hmm. same thing with our label. You know, I've had people that have approached me on eBay or, or have, you know, said, hey, I want to buy one of your books, but I can't handle this ugly label. And literally, I mean, no, hey, and you know what? More power to them. They have that right. I don't care. Yeah. Send it in and you spend $17, $18, depending on the book, and you get a universal label. It's still yeah. the same book. You'll get the same grade. So, you know, I, 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 but you can't send it in without us involved and get the label. So right. it's like, I feel that, okay, if you really feel strongly about getting a universal label, you always have that opportunity to get it, but you can't get ours if you want it without us involved. And we do help people get our label, you know, cause we have hundreds, maybe thousands of books that got graded before we had the label. So we send some of those out. Sometimes people are like, hey, can I get the label on this? We help them out. But again, that, that's really what it's about is making sure that there's a way for people to own the different things they want. So this seems like the evolution of that. And like you say, worldwide, I mean, that's a huge pull. And again, I hope I hope that the exposure just brings people more to the hobby in general. It's just 100%. And that's, that's exactly how we feel. Yeah, 100%. That's awesome. 100%. Yeah, and speaking of... Speaking of which, we were talking about some grails. There are some big grails on Heritage Auctions I'm excited to dive into. 
But before we do that, I want to say hi to some people from the community that joined us today. What's up, Omar? Hey, bud. Hey, what's going on, Omar? <laughs> Eric, Eric, what's up? What's, what's up, going on, up? Eric? Up, up, crypto. Excited to watch the series. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That's thank awesome. You. Up, Jason. My, co my collectibles. Thanks for joining us. Amazing content creator. Uh, Darren, if you haven't had a chance to look at his work, he is fantastic. Oh, okay. work. Really awesome. great guy. So, yeah, Heritage Auctions has some massive comic books coming out. Including this nine eight daredevil, my goodness! Look at this monster. <laughs> well, that has to be that has to be Red Hood's copy, right? I mean, how many are on the damn census? It, it one I think time, four. Rob, Rob, only four nine eights. Okay, I wonder if that's his. I mean, one of his because again, Rob's become a friend. It's and and his fiance Crystal. They're great. They came out and visited. We had an awesome time. Super cool. And again, that's cool. been the best part of this is you know, uh, getting closer with some of the, the you know the top dealers and you know developing a massive respect for them because you know yeah. they do this every day. That's their livelihood. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're we're kind of just having fun because, again, in no way, shape, or form is this my primary anything. And um, you know, I've able I've been able to create, if you will, like jobs though and infrastructure around it. Because again, I have two people. Well, really now with Eric, I mean, there's three people that literally work for the collection full time. I mean, you know, oh, and again, incredible. that won't be forever. But the point is, as of right now, with order fulfillment and and uh, um, um, again, separating things out, what should be graded, entering things for grading. I mean, just just building bags and boards. Yeah. I mean, you ever yeah. built bags and boards for three hundred and sixty oh, thousand comics? Oh my God. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah, I mean, you can pay me I do it. It's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> seriously, there's I mean, a lot of respect to these guys. I mean, they work yeah. very hard, and I'm very fortunate that they can be trusted. Yeah. But yeah, man, this auction is stacked. It's crazy, and we thought That's the previous one was crazy. This one's just <laughs> heritage. Just jumped another notch. Uh, all right, price <laughs> predictions. <laughs> I don't know. I think that, well, remember, I mean, I think the other one went for like what eight something, right? Like eight fifty or something. Rob, when Rob sold his, um, so it went. Oh yeah, I was right there, but like uh, uh, right close to a million. The last yeah. one was sold for nine. I can imagine this would probably go above that. I'd be surprised if it doesn't. Yeah, we haven't seen a sale for a nine eight in a long time. Well, whenever Rob sold, and it wasn't that long ago, but oh, this one, uh, I'd love yeah, that one. I don't right? have this one. I don't have this one. Everyone out there, if you don't know, this is the only nine six. There's no nine eights in existence, no nine nines, no tens. There's only the one nine six, and this is it. And so last time I think about what six, seven years ago, don't quote me on that. It's on go collect information for a couple hundred thousand dollars, I believe. Uh, I would presume this one probably passed a million dollars as well. Yeah. So I, I presume that. Yeah. Sure. You know, this is, this is kind of interesting, kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier with digital comic books. You know, there's less than a hundred copies on the cgc census of this comic i think there's less than 50 somewhere around there you know these comics that's total that's it, insane it, if they if, if these com if those comics disappear they'd be gone forever so it's kind of cool to see them uh stay alive on the blockchain you know kind of it brings it keeps their their history and having a chance to to actually own one um yeah. it's really special so, let, me especially this gold let me ask you a question about that because again i want to keep learning more about this when they make that comic digitally of, of one of the older ones, like a golden age, are they literally scanning one of those books? I mean, like, how are they creating it digital? How how accurate is it of the original? How are they doing that? Yeah, so That's it's it's, diff it's different depending, I guess, who's doing it. So like DC Comics does it a little bit differently, where they're they're actually like recreating the book uh, and like intentionally putting distress and things like that. So like that's actually something they're like designers are doing, you know, completely new and fresh. Um, and then for the VB Comics. They do kind of like a mix, like they'll they'll use the original cover and then try, do you know if it's actually a scan of the original cover? Is that what it is? I'm not 100%. There was a conversation about this and I, I'm going to look into that. If anybody out there knows, please uh, answer in the comments for us. I know there's yeah. a lot of Bad Cal fans out there. <laughs> yeah, but I'm but, pretty uh, sure it is, it I, is a scan because they had an I, issue once where they accidentally did the facsimile cover. I think instead of the original cover, which which book was that for? That was, was that... that was for Batman One. You saw part oh, of that, that was Bat House, and, and the community that community called yeah. that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Got it. um, yeah, that that yeah, but uh, but this one actually is on Candy Digital as well, and there's only like three, I think three thousand editions total across five different variants. And the legendary, there's only a couple hundred, and they're they're actually very affordable. They're about two hundred dollars right now. So that's pretty wow. remarkable considering the scarcity of this comic and the popularity. I mean, this is considered one of the best Wonder Woman issues ever. Oh, you know, next sure. to Wonder Woman 1 or, yeah, or a first appearance yeah. comic. Super special. Yeah. yeah. Super for, special. The, for, the, for the comics on VB for, so they had like the five five rarities and then the ultra rare, which is like the fourth highest, they do a VB exclusive cover. So 
that's actually brand new art that they bring in an artist to basically kind of make like an homage cover or their own take on the original cover. Um, and then, yeah, so th those are brand new covers and that art is basically only available digitally as an NFT and is not available in the physical world. Okay. That's yeah. one yeah. way to do it. Okay. I was just curious. That's really cool. As long as, yeah. but I think it'd be really neat to have a scan of like, yeah. Imagine that yeah. would be a whole thing. Can you imagine like, let's say someone said, all right, this is the nine six years. I'm scanning this nine six. Now that is literally a digital of that nine six. Right. That could yeah. be pretty cool. I mean, that's, that's basically what courtyard is doing. Yeah. With the okay. Pokemon cards. So yeah. yeah I with mean, the slab. I, I, with I, the slab. With the actual slab, yeah. So, wow. yeah, I, mean, I think I think we're gonna we're gonna see that. I mean, and I think like, is it eBay? Does eBay do that with the vaulting or Golden it, does it? I know, right? Sure. Golden does, and they, they, yeah, and I know eBay has their vault store as well. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, but they're, I, but they're I, not I, using blockchain. Uh, not to my knowledge, not yet, not no, yet, not yet. Yeah. but I feel like it's inevitable. It's I think inevitable. so too. Um, but I do know Golden. I've bought some stuff from Golden. And I had it shipped to the PSA uh, HQ out in jersey i think i believe it's out in jersey a warehouse out in jersey what's cool too is if you buy it off golden and you send it to their vault i mean you don't have to worry about shipping to you you don't have to worry about holding it you can have it shipped to the vault they can hold it for you essentially for free and after 90 days you can ship it back out for a dollar and you don't even pay sales tax you don't have to pay sales tax you don't you pay one dollar for shipping that's a trick mm -hmm. it is yeah. very cool yeah. or if you yeah. decide you want to sell it again you can cat cash out and just have it sent back to gold and they'll sell it for you. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Never have to yeah. Sales tax thing is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sales. Oh, yeah. Course. The sales tax was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. I buy it. Listen, I buy very regular off heritage and uh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a big difference in price. And in yeah. For sure. Look at this. Yeah. You, you, I was gonna say yeah. you, you don't have to. You don't have to tell us which one specifically you're going for. But are, are you going any, going for any of the books in this? Uh, in this <laughs> yeah, I I have not. So like okay. So like any of the books. Uh, not that not the Wonder Woman, but like this. I mean, you know, I yeah, three or four copies maybe. But again, I think the it's highest crazy. copy is an eight oh, which is incredible. But I mean, again, I would not trade up. I wouldn't even consider. I mean, again, it's just yeah. like no, that's that's fine. Um, you know, there was only a couple times that I really went for it. Like I bought, I bought, I never forget this. I bought um, an Avengers 57 nine, eight. And at the time oh, there wow. were only like 12 on the census and nine, eight, but I, you know, it's my favorite silver age cover by a long shot. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a couple of nine sixes and so on, but I just wanted one of those nine eights as, as far as the rarity. That's and cool. really wanted. Yeah. So it's, and I remember I bought it off um, uh, pedigree comics is a, is a smaller auction house and you know, did a good job, but um, you know, I ended up getting it there and I, I, ended up paying uh, the highest price ever for that book, which, you know, is not something that you would brag about, you know, at all, because it's like, well, I paid for the most. Um, but I had people congratulate me, like, wow, man, it's sick pickup, you know, you paid the most. And it's funny because I was like, no, you know what? I usually don't congratulate people when they pay the most. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> so very hey, well, you, you just, you, you, you drove the value up for that book though. Now, now people yeah, know it's worth more. Yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah, yeah. But very rarely do I trade Thanks, up. Um, yeah. <laughs> straight up, but most of the ones. So it'll depend. There are um, there are a couple that maybe, um, uh, you know, like I'll tell you one that I'm most interested in, but I think it's going to go for a little um, more than I want to pay for restored. You know, the action one eight is getting all the attention, yeah. Um, but the restored copy, yeah, I was looking at that. Is up yeah, there. and yeah, you know, so. obviously, everyone's question immediately is, can the restoration be removed, right? And the reason is right when you get a restoration that high, when you have an eight zero, you're like, well, shoot, this thing could fall to a two, and yeah. it's fine. You know, let's cut half the book out or whatever. You know, you can drop yeah. this thing to a one eight, and it's still going to be worth way more than the eight would be restored. Exactly. Right? But everyone has that same mindset. And I called, I called Heritage, I called, you know, my rep at Heritage, um, you know, Matt, and I said, you know, I'm sure everyone's asking, but he's like, no, it can't be removed. Which I figured mm -hmm. because, yeah, you know, they would have done it, right? Heritage right. would have said, hey. True. Yeah, yeah. So um, it, it is what it is. But that book's interesting. Um, it is interesting. So we'll it, see how, how much purple that goes labels are in, Yeah, and I'm glad that you brought that up because purple labels in general are interesting because when people see a purple label, oh, it's restored. But dive deeper into it. Like, look at actually why it's restored. If it's just color touch on on the front, sometimes yep. I, I know there has to do with the staples. Um, yeah. But it, as long as really for me personally, as long as it's not trimmed. That's really what it yeah, comes down right. to for me personally. If it's not trimmed, mm -hmm. it's a great book. It's great and pr probably go significantly undervalued considering. Yes. Just because it's a purple label. You're right. Mm -hmm.
Listen, man, I mean, I'm with you. And if it presents well and, and all the defects are on the inside or something like that, or even if it's yeah. just minor color touch or something, um, yeah. So whatever, we'll keep an eye on that. I, I have an idea of that book going for, you know, the restored, I think will even go for four or 500. But, um, yeah. you know, I'd pay, I'd pay, I'd pay, I'd pay. <laughs> Enough to party. <laughs> I would. And this one, and this one, my yeah. goodness. And then uh, this that is the one's only so nine hard and high grade. That one's it's the so only, hard and high grade. It's the only one on the CGC census. It's well, I imagine because that's grade. such a hard book. Yeah. Not my yeah. favorite cover, but it's, I mean, all respect, massive respect. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very excited to see where this one goes. I yeah. I anticipate it's it's got to oh, man. I I, I would personally be shocked if it goes under two. Personally, I mean, especially considering where it's at now, um, I, I would be shocked personally. Big, big. Yeah. yeah, and One of course, pull it up here. <laughs> we have we have the uh, the crown jewel of the collection man. this action man. comics one you see where it's at right now Four, that's, 4. That's 6. What I, million. I, oh yeah. my gosh yeah i i was surprised it went so high so quick but again i yeah. mean that's nowhere close i still think i mean i think six is where you'll start seeing action and right. then they'll do good from there listen i'm hoping for i'm hoping for um you know eight figures that'd be yeah. amazing yeah. If it broke eight yeah. figures, that would be a major deal in our end, you know, in our hobby. Totally. Uh, yes. And just the whole the whole movie. I mean, it's just that's a big, that's a big magical number that needs to be broken still. You know, nothing's gotten close yet, but I mean, if that hit, if that hit 10 million, wow. I mean, you're talking worldwide news. I mean, it'll be on worldwide news anyway, but it'll be a big deal. And you know, it's funny because it's gonna sell, and then a few months after, we're coming out with a, a movie called Sony Superman. Yeah, that's interesting. Good. What timing? Yeah. What timing? Well, total luck. I mean, you know, and, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I hope too many people aren't disappointed that it has nothing to do with this book because, um, you know, but uh, wow, you know, and then the Christopher Reese documentary, the Christopher yeah. Reese documentary just sold, it went for 15 million. Um, okay. and wow. yeah, it did very well. Wow. Um, so it sold, and um, you know, so that's obviously very, you know, obviously, you know. Uh, about other parts of his life, but I mean, a, a huge component of that will be Superman related. So yeah, you have a lot of pro Superman, the James Gunn news, you know, uh, and everything yeah. going on. So this, I think, I think whoever owns this is timing this wonderfully. I wish them all the yeah. luck. Um, so yeah. special. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested yeah. to see, cause I, I, feel, I feel like when the, when the crypto markets pump, you right. know, the comics tend yeah. to do pretty well, people cycle their profits in. So I'm interested to see if, if these sales do exceptionally well because of that. Yeah. I think there's a lot of different kind of eyeballs on things like this, man. I mean, I happen mm -hmm. to be involved um, through one of the finance companies that I, I um, uh, you know, have equity in that, uh, and I'm gonna hear a lot of things behind the scenes that go on. And uh, I can tell you is that you know Wall Street money is extremely aware of this asset class. Mm -hmm. Extremely. I love aware that. And so you know, there's a reason why Blackstone Capital buys a company like you know NGC. For yeah. five hundred eighty million dollars, okay, right. It's not right. because they think this is going <laughs> to fizzle out, right? Yeah, you no, know, it's kind of like when a company, like, what is it? Does a company Disney? Didn't they buy Marvel? I've heard you of know, them. I mean, you know, yeah, you've heard of them, right? <laughs> yeah. So when, when, when those kind of moves happen, you pay attention. Yeah, you know? it's so follow the money. Have, it's gotta follow the money. Yeah, correct. And listen, a ten million dollar asset to them is a joke. You know, some hedge right. fund picks that up. That's a. That's just. You know, that's petty cash. And the thing is that uh, when they have, you know, trillions under management and they're looking to diversify, because what do you buy right now? Everything's high, right? So yeah. if you're a hedge fund and everything's up, you need to diversify into other asset classes that you think, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. You know, they they stay anonymous and so on. But I mean, um, I think that, yes, I think that you have some institutions that are watching this auction right now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think they're saying they're saying this this collectible category is very much like a you know a store of value you know compared right. to a lot of other assets classes that you know when the market dumps then you're kind of shut out of luck but you know you know we did we did see a pretty big dip in comics but like the Grail comics like they they hold their value. Listen, mm -hmm. art has outperformed the S and P for decades and yeah. decades and decades and decades. This is art. You're looking at a piece of exactly. art. that is a piece of art that's a piece of really worldwide human history but certainly yeah. americana right and the thing is that uh you know i don't care what you have to say you know who your favorite superhero is is relevant superman is an incredibly significant figure in our society and yeah. owning that book is the pinnacle 
I mean, yeah. so yeah. it's right. been said that the Superman symbol is more rec more recognized or as what recognized as the Holy Cross, which is that's an, <laughs> speaks for itself. You know, it's yeah. interesting, especially for cryptocurrency. I'm very excited to see Bitcoin bounce back in a big way. And I've always said to myself, man, with Bitcoin, when it inevitably, in my opinion, at least, hits you know $100,000, how is that going to affect physical collectibles or digital collectibles? And it's really exciting to see Heritage accept cryptocurrency. They accept Bitcoin and they, I believe ETH as well. But that is awesome. That is so cool and very smart on their part. Yep. I'd be curious to know, and maybe I could find out, but I mean, again, if they're... Uh... You know, if they're uh, immediately liquidating that and doing the conversion, because like our site, our website takes crypto. Of course. Oh, I, nice. you know, oh, I, I, oh great. Oh, oh damn, that's so awesome. How could it not? How could it not? I right? love that. So I, I, we haven't made a sale yet. So, hey, by the way, we'll put it out there. Whoever makes the first sale, I'll send you something insane. I'll send you something <laughs> really, really cool if you do a decent purchase in crypto. Because, again, we haven't had one yet. It'd be neat. So we'll celebrate that. Um, cool. But the point is that I'm not converting it, of course, because it's me. Yeah. And I just yeah. want the crypto. Right, right. But yeah. you can have that utility and any other plugin. You can have it do an immediate conversion. Mm -hmm. So you know, I have a good friend that is um, is an orthodontist, and um, you know, he was very interested in, in in taking crypto as payments. You know, and um, you know, it, he was going to do the immediate conversion, right? And I'm like, listen, there's apps for this that you can just load. I mean, Coinbase has a custodial service. BitPay yeah. has a custodial service. You know, mm -hmm. these are so accepting Bitcoin as you know, because there's always been the case, right? No one was always like, well, I can't buy a coffee with it. Right. I can't buy a pizza. Well, yes, you can. Not yet. Oh, you can, yeah. No, you no, can, you now. can yeah. now easily. You can now, yeah. As as You're basically you just know, accepting USD. USD. Yeah. Well, correct. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the point is that any merchant can set this up almost brainlessly at this point. The, the platforms mm -hmm. are that easy. Like if you have yeah. any Shopify account uh, uh, or site like we do, you download a plugin and it's a few easy steps to set up. And now right. you accept crypto. And then you just select a toggle button. Would you like to insert a wallet address that this crypto then will go to per token that you accept? Or do you want us to do a conversion, which of course there's a fee involved? Great, mm -hmm. but it's really that easy. So I think that's extremely exciting that, you know, the, the, the vehicle to pay in crypto, you know, this whole argument, well, I can't buy a car with it. I can't buy. Well, yes, you can. You just have to find <laughs> the right merchant, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's probably only a matter of time before everyone accepts it. I mean, at this point, why not? Like, it, it, it really, it should be done at the visa level or something like that. Mm -hmm. It should be what right. they get visa and Mastercard and American Express, and they already do. I mean, they are payment gateways for this as well, but it should just be an automatic at this point, you know, um, yeah. um, where you can choose. But it's the same card; yeah. it's your same exactly. physical card, right? Um, yeah. I have in the just door next to me. I have somewhere. I have a, one of those old BitPay cards. I got one way back, and it worked. Oh, yeah, but it would yeah. take from your wallet. You know that was it was almost like a debit card for your wallet it would pull right against your wall but it would it would convert the cash value so you literally mm -hmm. could walk into a starbucks and buy that cup of coffee because they're getting the cash but it's sucking that from your wallet and doing the, the conversion on the back side mm -hmm. so yeah. people need awareness that these things are here they're here yeah definitely i have to ask you this 8.5 is not the highest grade there are two nine o's i agree now would you yeah. would you prefer this eight five pedigree or would you rather have the 9.0? <laughs> At that level, you're talking about, um, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, do you want, you know, in your in your in your insane Malibu beach house, do you want your third swimming pool to be 78 degrees or uh, 70, 77 degrees? I mean. I, I think that at that Do you point, you want to go salt or chlorine? I'm a 77 <laughs> degree man myself. <laughs> yeah, again, you need to be facing this this degrees west to get that sunset, or can you deal with? You know, so I, I think that you're splitting such hairs there of luxury sure. that would be amazing. Um, I'm not a huge, um, you know, I I have I I would like to own one book from every pedigree. I've said that. That's a cool. That's a cool. Book. I, yeah, I, I want to have a book. I don't even care a three O or two O, whatever. I just have one book from every pedigree would be anything. I haven't even looked into the feasibility of that. Meaning, like, are are some of these even still obtainable? You know, some of these older pedigrees and so on. Again, I find that concept interesting, but no, I do not chase pedigrees. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to own a promise just because, again, like like maybe some people find our story captivating. I found that story incredibly captivating, and I really wanted to own and. And pay respect and homage to that family story and what they went through and that mm -hmm. sacrifice. 
Um, so that was important to me. I just picked up, um, listen, and he, again, I've, you know, become a friend in the industry, you know, um, um, Jeff to a golden age guru, right? He had the secret sound label and I, it was very important for me to get a couple of those books, you know, because I'm like, wow, this is special. You're the second Providence label and, yeah. you know, all love and everything about it. So again, that, but I can't even comment. If you're, if you're at the, per, if you're a person that's <laughs> making the decision between an eight, five action one and a nine, oh, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear about yeah. your other problems in life. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, I'd be happy, crazy. honestly, I'd be happy with a nice solid 3 0. Literally, like I, a, a nice presented full cover that's great. Maybe some staining, you know, and stuff like that in, in certain places, but a nice full, like a nice, just little 3 0. That's a nice, a little 3 0. I mean, you know, that would be more than fine for me. You know, uh, again, yeah. a nice presenting or two, but I, I, I'm i putting out there, I would very much like to own this book and I'm prepared to own it one day if the right opportunity presents itself. So, again, I knew what this one would go way above. Um, yeah. I was like, well, if it goes for like two and a half million, I'll, 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 I'll say, but uh, I, I knew that was absurd. But you know, again, if I could get something in that range that was presentable, um, uh, I would, I would, I would give extreme consideration to it. Well, I have a strong feeling your patience will pay off. I think, well, or not, or it'll price itself out. And never price out. Out. <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, who knows? I mean, yeah, you never have yeah. an opportunity to get one within the range. I mean, we'll have to see. I don't know. Well, it's we'll it's see. just like, just just like property in a ski town. The best time to buy is always now. Just always yeah. goes up. So always now. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. well, we hope. I mean, you know, we talk about this all the time. I, I had this long conversation with um with Mark, who does the cards, and you know, there is no answer. But again, yeah. this is where now a Superman, <laughs> maybe a little bit different, Superman, Batman, I mean the biggest names. But there is a sentiment of like, you know, you get someone that is, you know, a teenager right now, or someone that's in middle school right now. What are they going to care about when they can afford, right, um, the big rookie card or the big right. whatever, you know? So we talk about this with cars all the time. Take a player like a guy like you. Like if I throw the name out, Ernie Banks. You know who Ernie Banks is? Of course. Ever heard of Ernie Banks? Okay. Oh, yeah. You've heard of Ernie Banks. Okay. We have one yes, yeah. one no. Okay. Yeah. Well, Ernie Banks, uh, you know, Hall of Fame, African-American mm -hmm. pitcher from way back in the day, incredible player. I mean, again, stats, whatever. But the point is that unless you know about him, he, you never watched him play. He's not relevant in your life. You're way too young to ever have really seen his impact on the sport. Are you going to collect his card? So, you know, who are we selling? Mickey Mantle, he's different. Willie Mays, he's different. Hank Aaron, right. he's different. Okay, these are household names that will probably, Babe Ruth, all right? But take a guy like, um, um, you know, even 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 someone as well-known as, let's say, Cal Ripken Jr. or something like that. Yeah, There's a certain Iron point, Man. a middle school student right now or high school student does not care about Cal Ripken. No relevancy. Great old player. That's an old guy. Okay. How much is that card going to be desired 20, 25 years from now, 30 years from now? So when you start looking at the investment opportunity of some of these books and the relevancy, again, this book is different. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I don't know. Um, Dr. Doom one, you know, again, depending what they do with them in the MC or whatever else. Is that still going to be as, as high of a book, you know, later, later on? I mean, again, pick many different examples if you want. Mm -hmm. Cards more so, you know, Pokemon, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. there are, is Pokemon still relevant with the current generation? I'm asking. I don't know the answer. Oh, massively. Yeah. Massively? Okay, it's great. That's true. So that means, yeah. Okay, like, good. That means that they will continue, you know, exactly. um, yeah. Yeah, to, to desire those things. But. You get what well, I'm like Yu-Gi-Oh, for example, was really relevant when I was a kid, but no longer is. You know, like, well, I have, but I have yeah. a friend. Uh, I have a friend whose son, to be honest with you, uh, is super still into it. But okay. he's, so maybe he's, I'm wrong. Maybe it is still like now. But he's in his yeah. late twenties, so gotcha. he probably got hooked back then, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Your that point, that you know, middle schooler yeah. maybe is getting into it. Yeah, it's interesting. I, yeah, I, I love that you said that too, because the biggest thing, pop culture relevance. That's all really important things I think about. And I love that you mentioned about Superman. I mean, for example, AF-15, how many people have actually that own that comic, that physical comic? I'm cu generally curious how many people have actually read it. Probably not many. I, I would say probably not many, honestly. But right. they understand the significance of that comic because it's Spider-Man's first appearance. So they know the value. It's all tied, I would presume, to the pop culture, to films that were released over the past 10 to 15 years. It's something that they can connect with. And I think that's really interesting. And a big reason why we kind of actually been diving into like VHS tapes too, because they're tied to films that are still very relevant today and they're very, mm -hmm. very rare. 
And yeah. even though P the future generation, you know, they'll probably, they've never been around VHS tapes. I don't think it's going to matter because they're going to understand the significance. This is when the film first came out. It's first release. Back to the Future is my favorite film. And I wasn't, I, I was born in the 2000s, but still I appreciate and love Back to the Future. And I would love to own that piece of history because of that reason. So I think that's really an interesting connection there. But a middle school kid, again, going back to that, or a high, or high school kid, their favorite movie is not Back to the Future. And will never <laughs> be Back to the Future. And, <laughs> yeah. and no, nothing wrong with that. I mean, I love it. Yeah. With anyone, yeah. right? Of course. But right. it's 20 80s music. But, but, but maybe it's stuff. maybe it's Dune or whatever. Or, yeah, that's yeah. exactly yeah. the point. It's, okay, yeah. so back to the card analogy, right? They're going to want LeBron James. They're yeah. going to want um, maybe even Kobe, okay? Yeah. Depending, the age. But they're not going to want, I mean, like, Again, fine. They might they understand Jordan is massive. Okay. But are they gonna want a Scottie Pippen? He was the best number two man in basketball. Hard ever. to say. Yeah. You're gonna want to say who, yeah. who, who, walk up to a 20 year old and say, What do you think of Scottie Pippen? Yeah. Uh, didn't he play with Michael Jordan, maybe? I mean, and whatever. Do you want his rookie? <laughs> well, I don't yeah. know. Are you gonna pay 10 grand for it? No. I mean, so that's what I'm trying to say yeah. is the value. I don't know. It's gonna be very yeah. interesting. And what Listen, Hollywood has their work to do. They have to keep this stuff relevant. Exactly. Because if yeah, they don't, I mean, I don't think it's just going to be comics. I don't think it's enough. Right. Do you? Yeah. I mean, again, I mean, look at when all the when the movies came out and the MCU. That's when this stuff boomed. Totally. Oh. Yeah. 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 A lot is riding on James Gunn. <laughs> we believe yeah. in you, James Gunn. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I love Peacemaker. I mean, I love Peacemaker. Love Peacemaker. Peacemaker. Love Best Peacemaker. opening title sequence ever. Oh, honestly. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's the only title Peacemaker. sequence that I would, I would watch every time and not skip. 100%. I would never skip every yeah. time. Every yeah. time. Yeah. 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 So, it's but incredible. no, he's not going to do, um, you know, legacy like that, of course. It's not going to be the same humor in the adult mm -hmm. kind of. But my yeah. point is that, you know, all the talent is there for it to be an incredible thing, but that's also a lot of pressure, you know? And again, I mean, um, what kind of Batman do you like? You know, do you like the dark Batman? You know, like the last one we had, or do you like the, you know, I mean, they're even teasing the Keaton again now, you know, that whole thing. Yeah. That, was, the yeah. Grand, that, was, that awesome. was great. Yeah. yeah that was so fun. Cool. I mean, you know, so, so there's some decisions to be made. You know, I'm personally really sad that, and I hope they still do it if they have an offshoot. I mean, like, dude, the end of Black Adam, I was like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. it's on, you know? And the thing is, they need to follow up on that. Yeah. I mean, Black Adam and Superman need to show down, man. That's what has to happen. It was so. a call out. Yeah. Let's go. I hope so, too. Them out. They're right there. I know. I know. God damn it. I mean, so. <laughs> yeah. I James Gunn happens. came in and just swept the floor. So he did it in a different timeline. So there's yeah. nothing to say that you couldn't That's do. Fair. I mean, because he's totally. really younger, right? So there's no yeah. reason that you still couldn't do the other. I don't know. We'll see. Again, it's way above I, I will my say favorite. What's fun about James Gunn is that he's really <laughs> open to ideas. You know, I, I don't yeah. feel like he's a guy that's just going to have one certain idea and kind of be closed off. I mean, he does have his beliefs, of course, but I think he's pretty open to ideas. You know, definitely take criticism. Um, I'm ready, man. I'm job. excited. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I really I just, am. What's, what's really special is that movie comes out on July 11th, 2025, and he sent a tweet out, and he didn't even realize it at the time, but that's his dad's birthday. July 11th. Holy so it's smokes. incredibly, he was talking to his brother, Sean Gunn, about it. Ah. He said that was super special for him. And actually, coincidentally, that's also my birthday. No and I'm, I'm, I, I, You know where I'm going to be on July 11th, 2025? <laughs> I'm going to be there in a Superman costume, man. That's, <laughs> that's really great. That's really great. What yeah. do you think of the logo? I, I like yeah. it. Yeah. I like very, it. Very yeah. Alex Ross, and I love Alex Ross. Yeah, exactly. I love Alex Ross. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's very, very much like Alex Ross. Do, do you collect Alex Ross's stuff? Oh, yeah. A kingdom yeah. come. Oh, worship. I have an original Alex Ross hanging uh, that I purchased. Cool. That, uh, yeah, and it's um, wow. It's Superman. I'll send it to you guys. It's Superman um, um, slumped in a chair. He's older. You know, he's from the kingdom come era, right? And oh, he just cool. looks tired. And he's yeah. sitting next to kind of a crooked lamp. It just looks like he's in his, you know, apartment. Just, man, you know? And the thing is that I love that. I love that. Yeah. Because that's my favorite part of Superman. Is, is is when they really get into the human component. You know, you got to pick up a car, throw things, put, fly into space, fly in the sun. You know, you can write those powers. Those are those are easy things to do. Writing powers, I think, is easy because you just break rules. You know, it's right. like, oh, okay, this guy can breathe underwater. Okay, he can't. He can do this. Okay, great. You just write it. But how do you merge that with the human emotions and, and responsibilities yes. that we all have? That is where I think it's, you know, Superman and Lois, like, 
I worshipped that show. Like, I mean, yeah. I absolutely just worshipped that show because I thought it was one of the best representations of Superman and Clark being portrayed as a human, as a family man, as a, I mean, they all did Smallville. They all touched on it, but mm -hmm. just, I, I love that cast. I love the way they really, really showed the human element of that. Um, so again, if they can keep making relevant films like that and make it emotional for people and, and, and connect with these characters, you know, rather, rather than just being, a, you know, maybe some good looking guy or a girl on screen that, you know, you know, think is cool to watch and is action. If they can make it meaningful, um, I think that, that this stuff will continue to do very well. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, Darren, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on today. This has been an absolute blast. So much fun. Seriously, Everyone man. out there, make sure to follow the links down in the details. Uh, fan, fantasticcollection.com, sellingsuperman.com. Make sure to check out those websites and keep your eye, eyes and ears out for Selling Superman. Uh, when's, the, when's the premiere? Well, we don't know because we don't oh, know who's yeah. going to A, pick it up, how that'll work. And yeah, I have yeah. really no idea. So maybe I'll sit yeah. right next to you at it. I have no clue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah. So, well, we uh, definitely, we definitely hope to have you back on to talk more about that when that happens. Thank you so 100%. much. Guys. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you. And hey, listen, keep educating me behind the scenes about this whole NFT stuff. I need. Oh, it. we will. Oh, you can on that. <laughs> and I need yeah. that VHS of Superman. So don't forget about me. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. Thank good luck at the film here. festival. Oh yeah. Yeah. Very good. Thanks, thanks again, Darren, and thank you everybody for joining us today. And we'll see you on the next one. Take care.